This is an instruction video on how to replace a cartridge on a Moen TL3600 exec temp shower faucet. Uh, uh, the, I've got the instructions, but they're lacking. It's, they're, they're not very clear at all in how to actually get into the cartridge and how to take it apart. So I'm looking at the parts that I got from the manufacturer and sort of trying to get a mental idea of how is this thing put together by looking at the parts. And so we're going to start the process right now. This is an image of the 3600. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the little push button cap with a sharp little knife, kind of a doll, pop the cap out. And inside of there is this red little, uh, oh, whatever, strainer uh, screw thing. And we're going to have to remove it with a fairly, fairly wide, flat screwdriver going counterclockwise. Again, we've, we have removed the cap. Now we're removing this little thin red uh, plastic. It just screws in there. We've gotten that out. Now, inside of that, the next step is to remove this screw. It's a brass screw that holds the handle to the cartridge. So now we're using a fairly thin flat screwdriver and we're, we're putting it in way inside of there. And I'm using a fair bit of force because remember, this faucet has been up here for 10 years. Um, so there, there it's out. Now this next step is a bit tricky. We don't want to mar the outside of this, uh, the handle. And so I'm, I'm using a, uh, some type of a cushioning. It's sort of a low skid material. I'm putting a pipe wrench because what's happened after this faucet has been in place for 10 to 12 years, it's basically almost welded itself uh, to the to the uh, metal that it's screwed into. And it even though it was installed hand tight, now I'm having to break that rust bond, if you will. And, and it takes a fair amount of leverage. It's a lot of force to go ahead and remove it. What we're going to do is, is once I've broken the bond, if you will, now I'm just going to unscrew and this, this will remove the entire handle assembly and it'll give us a, it'll give us access uh, to where the cartridge is. And that's going to be the next thing. Uh, these threads are fairly fine. This little shroud is going to want to fall off. So keep it all together. There's also a spring. Uh, just remember to put that spring back in. Um, um, it helps to keep that little push button thing uh, popped out. So there's a spring and I'm actually placing all these items on the ground in the same sequence that I've taken it apart so that I don't get confused. Now we remove this little plastic ring. Now pay attention because on, on the left side, it's got a little indexing mark where the faucet stops. And so you want to put that thing back in the same position. In my application, it's at the uh, nine o'clock position. Okay, so I'm looking at the uh, new cartridge and this ring to see how they're put together. Again, you can't make sense with the instructions. Um, so what we have to do is I'm going to try to take these channel locks and put it on the outer ring and apply a little bit of force and see if I can get that thing to break. Now, in this installation of the faucet, uh, the, the faucet is probably installed a little bit too deep into the wall, so it's really difficult to get a good purchase. So hopefully you'll have a little bit more room and you've got a little bit more leverage. Now, the channel locks did not afford me enough uh, uh, leverage on on the faucet. So what I'm going to have to do is use a pair of uh, um, this pipe pipe clamp and and I'm opening the teeth right at the right mark because I don't want to bugger up the threads on this even though it comes with another set. Um, uh, I've got just enough room to get the uh, the teeth on onto that ring without really destroying it. And as soon as I've broken it. I'll use the channel locks to unscrew it because I'll have a little bit more control and I won't bust up the tile as much. Okay, and that just unscrew it counterclockwise and that outer ring will come out now. This is where things start to go downhill. Okay, so I'm using a socket, and you want to use a deep socket, if you will, uh, preferably. I think it's a three-quarter, seven-eighths, uh, whatever it is that fits snug on the end of this cartridge. Um, I'm going counterclockwise. I've loosened 
the cartridge and so I think I'm actually removing the cartridge but but I'm only removing like a portion of it and and what's stuck is the rest of the cartridge now what I noticed when I installed the new cartridge that they've got reverse threads so that when you are unscrewing it you're actually tightening it and but in fact you are removing the cartridge so they reverse the threads and in this case here they didn't do that when when you go counterclockwise you're unscrewing this the inside of the cartridge but not the outer shell the main the main body of the cartridge so it's a real problem once you do get the cartridge out there's going to be a little bit of water i mean i got the water shut off but there's still this this is a two-story house and i'm on the this bathroom is in the first floor so there is still some water in the pipes so instead of letting that water get behind the wall i'm going to put a uh, uh, divert that water so that it stays within the tub and not uh, settle into the back of the wall. Now we're going to have to use uh, some special technique in getting the outer part of the cartridge removed. Um, again, they, they they did looks like they improved the design by putting a reverse thread. So when you actually go uh, counterclockwise, you're unscrewing the cartridge, and so that's helpful. So that's going to be the next part of the video. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting a light because I can't believe they would have designed this thing with this flaw where when you try to unscrew the cartridge, well, only the outer stem of it comes off, but the main body is still stuck in there. So I'm using the new cartridge. I'm trying to compare it, see if I'm, I'm missing something or maybe there's another technique but I think it's just a bad design. Uh, now, how interesting, the new cartridge does have a reverse thread, so when, when you are unscrewing the inner part of this cartridge, it actually unscrews the entire cartridge, which is a good idea. And so I've sort of sat satisfied myself that I've got to come up with another option, how to get some uh, force on, on this, uh, uh, the part of the cartridge that's still stuck in the wall. Okay, so the outer part of the cartridge is still stuck in the wall, which is the most important part of it. We've drained most of the water out of the faucet, and now we're going to get a piece of tinfoil, and we're going to create a heat shield. What we're going to do is we're going to use a torch, and we're going to heat the outside of the cartridge uh, because it's screwed into the inner part of the cartridge, and that heat differential should break the bond of the rust and make it much, much, much easier to, to remove uh, because there is insulation in the wall, there's wood shavings, there's two-by-fours. We want to protect the wall uh, uh, from from this from the heat and you have to use a fair bit of heat don't just stay in one spot keep the heat moving go all the way around the perimeter again you don't want water in this faucet because if you got water you'll never get the temperature hot enough to actually make the two uh, pieces of metal uh, uh, move into different directions because it's the it's the expansion that breaks breaks the rust bond it's an old plumber's trick that if you've got an old plumbing fixture that's been stuck in a, for a long time, use heat. Um, um, oftentimes, if you use it on a chrome piece, you'll end up damaging sometimes the exterior of it, but sometimes you don't have a choice. And uh, so th what we've done is we've I've, I've gone ahead and screwed back in the inner part of the cartridge, which has got the threaded part on, and I really tighten it up. And since I heated the outside of the cartridge, uh, uh, now I'm going to apply, reapply pressure counterclockwise, and we're going to see if we, we can loosen the outer part of the cartridge and success be ours. Uh, we were able to remove the, the outer part of the cartridge, did break the bond, and, and we are able to uh, unthread it from, from the rest of the, the housing of the cartridge. So shortly we're going to pull out the old cartridge and that actually worked so that's a good thing and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a visual and take a look at the new cartridge and make sure that they they're the same size they're the same fit and they look like they're the same product i mean 10 years later there there could be modifications um, 
So there's the old cartridge. It's pretty included on the screen. The little inlet screen is uh, fairly covered up with, with sediment. And, um, and looking at the new cartridge, it looks to me to be in a fairly good replacement. So I think we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and install it. All right, now we're ready to install the new cartridge. Now, look at what I'm using. I'm using this silicone paste. It's a uh, plumber's, plumber's paste silicone material, and I, I like to use it on most things, especially for cartridges. Even though it's got O-rings, typically speaking, where the cartridge slides into, it's really tight tolerance, and there can be sediment and buildup of material because this is a 12-year-old faucet. So the silicone not only protects the O-rings uh, so that it doesn't get marred when you're pushing it in, but it also makes it a whole lot easier when it's time to pull the cartridge out. And you might, you may not be the guy who's removing this cartridge, but the guy 10 years down the road who is removing it is going to thank you. So I've, I've put a, a generous servings of uh, uh, this uh, paste on all the O-rings and, and the threads, and therefore I slide it in and tighten it. Now, this is where I said that they got this thing right on the new cartridge where, uh, so when you're screwing it in, and and you're screwing in the main cartridge body all of a sudden you get to the end and then you keep screwing it and then you start to loosen the inner part of the cartridge which is the part that's got the nut on it which is a little bewildering you think that oh my, oh no oh my god that i just did i just break the thread that i strip it but it's actually a reverse thread the uh the outer part of the cartridge and then you got the inner part uh, which has got the two hex nuts on it, and and in order to remove the cartridge, it's reverse threads, and you put your socket on on that hex nut and go counterclockwise, and you'll actually now properly remove the cartridge. So they did make that improvement. Uh, now, before I figured that out, I actually started to screw the inner part of this cartridge and it was just getting looser and looser and I thought oh my god I better do something and so I'm going to put Teflon tape thinking that well, maybe I maybe I actually strip the threads out and the Teflon will help to kind of seal it and I put some silicone on it also to help it slide within the threads um, but to to my great uh, pleasure when I screw it in it's actually would and it would actually take out that uh, uh, it would take out the, the cartridge. And so really the, the design is such that the main body, the cartridge, isn't supposed to be like real forcibly tight, super tight, tight. And, and so that's why they have kind of this design. And so here's the outer ring. This is the after we've put it, the cartridge in. Now, I'm, I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and take some of this plumber silicone, and I'm going to be liberal with the threads, uh, both the insides of the threads and on the outside of the threads. And, and I'm going to screw it in, and I'm going to tighten it. This time, I'm not going to tighten it real tight, certainly not with the plumber's um, uh, pipe wrench. I'm just going to use a pair of channel locks and just get it snug. All right, we're done there. Now this is the little nylon keeper, if you will. And remember, we paid attention. There's a little indexing mark on, and in my case, it's at the uh, nine o'clock position. So that's where, when you turn left and you turn right on, on the faucet, it's got a stop. It's actually where the two stops are for, for the minimum and the maximum. So I paid attention to the position so that I matched it. And then remember uh, to put that spring, I forgot to put it in and I had to take this whole thing apart, but there is that big, it's like about an inch and a half uh, spring. And so you wanna make sure you put that spring. Here again, even though this is the outer part of the handle, I'm still gonna go ahead and be liberal and put some silicone on it so that it's gonna be easy to take off in the future. Remember the shroud 
on the faucet, the little trim piece, if you will, has a little index mark at the very top. On the very bottom of that big uh, shroud, it's got a, a cut so that water has a place to seep through so it doesn't get behind it and rot it out. So we're pretty close to being complete and that is how you replace a cartridge for a Moen TL3600. Now I'm going to do one more video and it's going to be on how to remove the outer part of this handle. Uh, it's, it's also so, so well rusted on there, it is impossible to hand unscrew it. And so we're going to have to use the pipe branch again and, and we're going to try to protect the uh, uh, brass, the rub, rub bronze material. And it's a little bit tricky to take off, but let's, let's do it because it's confusing. It's hard to tell uh, because it feels like it's actually welded on there, but it's actually just rusted on there. Well, so there's the temperature adjuster. You cannot remove this outer ring. Um, it's supposed to just by hand tight, if you will, but, but it's also been um, uh, oxidized on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a pipe wrench. We're going to tape the outside of it. I've used some really heavy-duty packaging tape because this piece uh, metal is concave. It's really difficult to get a good purchase with the pipe wrench on on this part and I've got it on there now instead of trying to turn with the wrench I'm sort of using the wrench to hold it in place while I manually move the handle and so uh, I end up I do end up marring it because it was just it was just too difficult to try to get a really solid purchase I did I did get the thing to move and I and I broke so you're going to see that now it's going to come off fairly easy but it's 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 a real bugger to pull it off so uh, I mean, there's just no other way you're, you're going to, if you can find a little bit better technique and how to put that pipe wrench on. All right, there we've gone. We've got, we've got to it. We've removed it. Now, I did make a mistake, and I forgot to put that large spring on the inside. So we're going to go through a step-by-step -step procedure on how to get to the cartridge. Uh, and so we sort of did the first step where we removed that outer ring. Um, now we're going to pop off the little, little button, if you will. And we're going to remove the little red th uh, threaded piece that sits inside. And do remember, there is that long uh, brass screw that connects to the uh, cartridge handle. So make sure you unscrew that. Now the next part, uh, it's that it's the ring that f sits up against the escutcheon. When you t when you're turning the entire handle, don't turn. Just turn the ring. Don't turn the handle part, like the part that the little 90 degree handle that turns left and right. Hold that steady while you turn the ring. Don't turn the entire assembly uh, uh, 360 degrees. Just turn that ring that is closest to the escutcheon. All right, there we've gone. We've removed it. You can see that I'm missing the spring, and that spring actually helps to push that button out, the reset button. So um, it kind of fits in place uh, and, and, and it holds itself because of the way the manufacturing is. Again, when installing it, do the same thing. Don't turn the entire handle assembly as one unit. Hold the handle part steady, like, like have the handle part facing down at 6 o'clock, and then turn the ring uh, that screws uh, that holds next to the escutcheon, just turn that part of it. Don't turn the entire handle. It's a little bit difficult to see, but you'll see probably my left hand is holding the handle part stable, steady in one position while I turn that outer ring uh, and tighten it. There we go. I'm checking it. And, and uh, again, it's sort of just hand tight. I've got silicone on it, so I know that it'll be much easier to remove in the future. So that sort of is your step-by-step -step procedure on if you had to remove the outer part of this uh, faucet handle. Um, there we go. We got the little button. We're going to screw the little red thing in. I already put silicone um, paste on it 
so all I'm doing is just going to rescrew it and the same even with the brass screw that screws inside I put that silicone paste on it because metal to metal even if it's brass uh, it will oxidize and um, um, it, it, the next plumber will love you for it kinda get it snug making sure that the handle moves freely Yeah, I appreciate you watching. Remember to subscribe. These are not paid videos. Your subscription and your likes are always uh, well appreciated. Thanks for watching.